Hello again, welcome back to Asgard, and welcome back to Enigmatica 2 Expert. So, since last episode, I have done a bit. Uh, you may notice that there is now infused grass here. Um, I don't, I looked and looked and looked and I couldn't find a, a uh, guardian temple. I actually did a bit of exploration between episodes. Um, but I did not find a guardian temple, but I did upgrade our save that's over in the smith. I upgraded it to a heavy save, and I've been um, sifting for Prismarine. So that's why I haven't finished out all the islands yet, just because I got tired of sifting and I had other stuff I was wanting to do. So I was just like, okay, that's good enough for now. But just to give you an idea. But I did make some infused grass, and I expanded this um, a bit, and it's already, oh my gosh, it's already filled up. This thing actually pumps out a lot of liquid XP. Uh, but you can see we've got three reinforced tanks of liquid XP at the moment. To be fair though, I did spend a while building, so I've been on here for a little bit. Um, not not a speed build because actually I was I was originally I started doing this because I was waiting for Terra Steel, and uh, at first I was sorting over in the storage building. I got a lot of stuff sorted. Um, actually, if we pop over there real quick, um, you can see I've only got these two crates left to sort out. So, and I've got like whole big sections of stuff kind of put together and uh, that I've been working on but anyways anyways so I started I started just kind of messing around in our Batania area and then I kept messing around and then things got out of hand and I, if you were if you're on the discord you will have seen a picture from the Batania area it would have been like last week at the time of, pu of publishing this but it's actually earlier today uh, for me <laughs> Because I'm trying to I'm trying to stay a, a decent amount ahead on all my series, um, but if we pop down here, this is what we've got going on. Uh, now this isn't finished by any stretch of the imagination, and um, it's going to get kind of shaped up a little bit more and smoothed out. This is actually just done um, using the advanced building guide and building this out. But this took forever to farm up because this is flowering oak leaves. And if you didn't know, flowering oaks, <laughs> I didn't even think about whenever I was like, oh, I want to go with flowering oak leaves. And then I started farming them and I was like, oh, why did, why did I do this? So flowering oaks, not all of these are flowering oak leaves. The majority are oak leaves. So you only get about five to 10, maybe 15 flowering oak leaves for each tree. Um, and I started uh, piling up oak leaves in this while I was doing it, and then I just started trashing them because I've got so many of the things. And, um, <laughs> and I had this just so they would grow when I was out doing other things. Like, this was terrible. So I had to farm up a lot. I don't even know how many it was, but it was a lot of flowering oak leaves. Now, not all of these are going to stay because the, the top of this is going to get opened up. Um, and it's actually going to have living wood that kind of runs up the sides. So you might get kind of like wild and brambly. Um, it's actually kind of cool because look at that. <laughs> because I lit some of this up and it makes this like really cool shape. But um, it's going to have this living wood that kind of runs up and then it's going to connect into the ceiling. So you're going to be able to see into it, but it's going to be almost like a, a segmented room, right? And then around it, I've started doing parts of the floor. Um, and what it is, these are um, actually living rock. But then I put glowstone, uh, neon glowstone underneath them. And then I use these green deck prisms from Cathedral. I absolutely love these things. Um, and I got to use them between episodes because the deck prisms let you see the block below them which is pretty neat. And it actually does emit light because of the glowstone underneath it. It shines up because it basically treats this like a glass block when you have the green deck prisms or the any kind of deck prisms. If you take a look at the prisms, you have one for each color. And I've been wanting to use those. Originally, I was going to try to use them in the storage build. And I was like, it doesn't really match. And, but then I was like, oh, I'm going to use them over here. So I actually went pretty, pretty uh, crazy with them. Had a bit of fun with them. And then if we step inside, this is what you will have seen if you're on the Discord is our fountain. I actually expanded it out. It was way too small. It was kind of a puny fountain. So I expanded it out. Actually, this right here is Shimmer Rock with Cyan deck prisms. 
around it. But I think it adds kind of a neat little feature to it. And then we've got gargoyles up here kind of shooting out um, water. And up here, which I did complete a quest. I didn't even realize this was a quest when I crafted it. But I made our elven mana spreader and it completed a quest. And then that's a flare lens that's dyed purple. So it emits that. And that's what that looks like. I think it turned out pretty good, pretty fancy. And this water is, um, <laughs> I went out I went out searching for this for a while. But if you're not familiar with it, this is the hot spring water. And, you know, we actually used this on the server, on Enigmatica 2 server last time. Everybody had hot spring water like all over the place because it gives you regeneration when you stand in it. But it also just looks really pretty with Dreamwood. So naturally I had to go with that. Um for our fountain and then I went ahead and made a bunch of floating flowers and um, I gathered up a fair few flowers while I was out exploring um, we still have to get a jaded amaranthus so we have infinite of these but this is kind of my light source it's not totally lit up in here at the moment we will light it up a bit more um, there's actually gonna be some hanging lanterns in here as well but we'll get into those later we will probably speed build out the rest of this dome I just kind of, I kind of started doing this and I was just editing footage and stuff. And then I was like, oh, I want to add a dome. I was actually on Discord whenever I was like, oh, I got an idea. And uh, I didn't tell everybody what it is because I thought it'd be kind of cool. But uh, like to unearth it on this video. And then that's a little bit more hot spring water right here. Um, yeah. And then over here, this is the other thing I just kind of started working on and then it kind of went, right? So I ended up sprucing up our Elven Gateway Portal. So this is what we got now. It's a little bit more wild and fun than just a portal, like an ugly portal. And I think once we have the living wood that kind of runs up um, through this through these leaves, and we shape up um, a bit of this because it's not just going to be a perfect dome. You know, it's going to be a little bit more wild. But I want this dome shape for the most part, and. Um, but I think once we have the living wood that kind of runs up and then like some branches hanging down and things, I think it's going to look really cool with this like elven gateway portal um, setting here. And I did change over our frame trap door to, um, to glimmering living wood. Had to farm up a lot of glowstone between episodes. but um, And then this has been running great. I did make a mana splitter just so we could generate um, some extra pools. And I've actually got... Uh, mana spreader shooting into those so that way this is the last one to pretty much fill up and then once it does then it shuts off but it goes ahead and fills these up first so um, over here you'll notice I did make a rod of the Bifrost and this is actually fairly easy to craft just requiring pixie dust dragonstone and elementium dragonstone we haven't made this on camera before but it's just mana diamond um, but you can use this to make Bifrost blocks with Alf glass, which is mana glass. Um, Bifrost blocks, and you can use that to make Shimmer Rock, and that's what I used over in the fountain. But in addition, of course, I showed you guys this in the last Enigmatica 2 playthrough, but you can make fabulous mana pools instead of doing this janky recipe. Um, you can just, once you get the Elven Gateway Portal, you can make those a bit easier. And then I also made a Hopper Hawk. And the reason being, I wanted to complete that quest because I made Solignolias. I made two floating Solignolias, so once we get Ring of Magnetization, we're not going to impede our mana generation system. So these things are super cheap, super cheap, just redstone root and petals. So there was a couple quests that I completed between episodes, but um, if we take a look at the quest book real quick, um, go over to Batania. You can see there's three quests done. The Elven Mana Spreader, you do have to make this right here, which is just four ingots of Elementium pumped out in the smeltery. Not too bad. And then a piece of Stardust Mana Spreader and some Dream Wood uh, to get that. And um, we'll go ahead and turn that in. Hopper Hawk, we already talked about that one. Turn that in. And Solignolia um, is like this. Brown, red, blue. Redstone root. Uh, redstone root just being grass and redstone. So we'll go ahead and claim that. And then 
turn these in. We got Chili Dogs. We got Hardened Iridium Glass. And we got Block of Arctic Fur. Ooh, that's nice. Because we'll probably do an armor display um, on this server too. Or on this pack. So. Um, and then Mana Splitter, by the way, is just Living Rock and uh, Mana Steel. And the way it works is... Oh, and I made these too. I need to talk about these. <laughs> I did a few things between episodes. But, um, yeah. These... The Mana Splitter, whenever Mana fires into it, it splits it... Uh, up to four different ways. So if you're firing from the top or bottom, you can you can split it into four different directions, uh, and it'll evenly split it. As long as it can accept mana, like once these filled up, all the mana was going straight to this. And I will say, this actually filled up surprisingly fast. It may have been because I was building and doing things while I was while I was waiting for Terra Steel, but I don't know. It just felt like it it felt it filled up extremely fast. So, and then these right here, these are just potency lenses which are Runes of Fire and Mana Lens to make that, and Mana Lens being Mana Steel and Glass Panes. And basically what they do is they increase the amount of mana that each burst can send out, um, which is kind of nice, because I decided that our Elven Portal, I'm never going to upgrade these Mana Spreaders that are here, because they match, right? They match, they look good, I'm not going to change them out. So I'm going to leave those as is. And by the way, the Velocity Lens, this right here, um, or not the, the flare lens. I don't know why I was thinking velocity. Um, the way this works is if you, you can dye it with a dye, you put it on and it emits particle effect. It's that easy. You know, it doesn't need mana or anything like that. So there's no mana system for that. Um, but yeah, I think that's got you guys updated, caught up and, uh, and all that. I hope you guys like this. It's it's still a work in progress, but I think it's going to be really cool. And it kind of keeps us from having just this big open room, right? Um, instead of it just being this huge open room, you're going to walk up and there's going to be this big, like, grove that's kind of tucked away inside of here. And, um, yeah, and then we'll have all of our Britannia stuff going on here, and it's going to be exciting stuff, I think. And then around it, I'm going to do kind of just like maybe some dense foliage and things around this, um, I do believe. Um, anyways, what we're going to do today, the very first thing we're going to do is let me pop over to the smith and the storage build. The only thing is like my teleport, it takes a second to get back into here uh, with our new teleport or with our new uh, dome at the moment. But like I said, I'm actually going to probably pull off some of this top. I just don't know how much and how exactly I'm wanting to do that. So, but let's go ahead and throw in, and that's probably going to start making mana now. Um, and those have sparks on them. What we're going to do is we're going to throw down that, that, that. Get this crafting up. Just whip us up two more pieces of Terra Steel so that we can make our block of Terra Steel. I figured I'd wait to do the last two. I could have done them already, but I figured I'd wait. We do those on camera because it's kind of exciting. Um, that, that, that. But I will say, once you get mana automated, it's really easy to make Terra Steel. I know a half a mana pool sounds like a lot, but it's actually not. I mean, this system is piddly, and it fills up these pools at a pretty decent rate. It's not like I really had to wait on Terra Steel. But then again, the point of this pack for us more is building and making a big build. And I don't really care so much about uh, speeding through progression or anything like that. Because, um, like I mentioned on the Discord, actually, or what kind of what I was talking about was um, the fact that in this pack, we'll probably keep playing even after we finish progression. Um, and maybe even we do all the quests and stuff, we still keep playing because this is kind of like my pet project. Like we are um, working up to big builds, right? And that's really the goal of what we're doing here. So let's go ahead and pull up our Master Infusion Crystal. Go ahead and drop that in. Yeah, we're going to need a lot of mana for this. That's fine. I have to wait till night. And unfortunately, it's day at the moment. And there's a big dead dragon there. Okay, well, I need to get my infusion crystal, and then we're probably going to make something new. I've got to look and see what I need for it, um, but just to make our lives a little bit easier. 
Okay, there's that. And what we'll, what I want to make is the imperfect. This and Astro Sorcery go hand in hand. Wow, it's super cheap in this pack. This has changed from when we played before. I know it is. Um, okay, let's pop over. Let's get this thing made out real quick. Okay, let's get our polished stone. And then we just have to get our stone burnt, which... Okay, there's my resonator. Let's go ahead and just plop this down for just a minute. And get this crafting up. Um, and then while that's crafting, oh, and I did put a weirding gadget right up here. So there's that. <laughs> and then, and I stuck one over here as well. I'm trying to get my chunk loads changed over to weirding gadgets. So there's one right there. And something I just thought of, I'm not going to have enough life essence at the moment. I know that, uh, to actually make this thing work. But anyways, there's our imperfect ritual stone. So, yay, we got that, at least. And then uh, let's get ourselves a block of lapis. That, and then if we click this... Oh, I do have enough life essence, apparently. Okay, so we made it night. And we'll give this just a second for the mana to build up. And basically it has this, this imperfect ritual stone. There's a few different rituals that you can do. Lapis on top of it. Um, we'll set it to night. And so you can cycle days. Like, once we start... Um, locating the constellations, you put a bed right here, night, check it, sleep, night, check it, sleep, night, check it, sleep, and go through and just get all the all the uh, constellations. It's really, really easy. Makes Astro Sorcery, like, really, really simple um, when you have Blood Magic alongside it. So, and I believe, if we take a look at the gates, yeah, this is going to finish out a gate for us. So... And I'll probably go with these seeds because blocks of prosperity. Oh, we can't look it up. I definitely don't want the infusion crystal, but block of prosperity is not very expensive for us at the moment. And you get two per. Um, even though tier inferium seeds. Oh, okay, yeah, that takes blocks of prudentium and all that. Yeah, we'll definitely be taking the Tier 2 Inferium Seeds. Okay, but that's done. Let's go ahead and get that. Oh, this is an amazing moment. We've been working a couple episodes on this, actually. So, but I know, like, as soon as we got the Batania stuff automated and set up last episode, it's like, okay, it's downhill from there. Like, it's easy. Easy going at that point. And should be just about done. There we go. Master Infusion Crystal, and Quest Complete. So we got to bypass the Standard Infusion Crystal completely. There we go. Okay, another gate is done now. Exciting stuff. Alright, so of course this has unlimited uses. Let's go ahead and pop over to the Smith. And I do have, um, well I have a Creative Essence. If you recall, we got this from a Quest. And it's really just used for creative vending upgrades, which basically means you win the game, more or less. Um, <laughs> and then creative flux capacitors. Of course, it needs... Uh, this only takes four. This takes 12. And we make it with uh, any tier 6 essence, void metal, blocks of insanium, blocks of base essence. Well, anyways, we've got that, but what I was going to... What I was going to show you is we've got 36 Supremium Essence. So technically we could have started without even having an Infusion Crystal by just tearing these down. But we didn't want to. We do not have very many Inferium Essence though. So what we're going to have to do, now that we've got that, I, we're going to be starting into Magical Crops. Officially. But we could do this and make Prudentium like that. But what I want to do, let me grab this as well. We're just going to take all of our measly amounts of essence here. It's not much. But we're going to fix that hopefully um, here in just a second. So what we're going to do, let's pop over. Let's see, give me just a second. I'm going to do some thinking about where I want to set this up. Um, I think for starters, I think I'm going to run these through cloches. If we did Phytogenic Insulator... 
yeah, there's no chance of double seed. I think seed doubling in this pack is just completely disabled. Whether you're using phytogenics or um, farming by hand or cloches, I think it's disabled in all of that. So um, that's fine. I think until we get a lot of essence built up, I'm probably going to use cloches. Big farms are better if you want more. Cloches are better for a situation like this where I only have four seeds. And I want to make the most of those four seeds. So in that case, cloches are wonderful for that. So um, I'm probably just going to get some cloches made up. Yeah, so give me just a second. Let me get some cloches made up, and I will be back in a minute once I get those made up. And once I figure out exactly where I want this to go, and I think we're going to do a temporary power system for now. And on that note, we'll probably do a temporary placement as well, because in the coming episodes, we really need to start in detect. I mean, we've done this, you know, immersive engineering is like all sorts of setup, and we've got, you know, plant oil is like capped, ethanol, well, it's pretty much capped. It's like down a little bit for some reason, but um, probably because, yeah, there's not really enough power going in. That one's growing right now, but that one's draining, I think draining too much, it's not going to grow. This one's working. Yeah, see, I don't have very much power going into this at all. <laughs> but we do have a lot of plant oil, and, I mean, that's going to be filled up inside of there and and all that. So, um, But, yeah, we're going to be starting into tech, but I think this episode we're going to do a temporary system just to get our Inferium up and going. And I've got to figure out exactly what I want to use for that temporary system. Okay, I decided what we're going to do. Um, I haven't made the cloches just yet, but I will um, in a minute. Because um, I've got to set back up the machines and all that mess. And I think it'll be easier to do in our new setup. But what we're going to do is we're going to make ourselves the diesel generator. Um, we're actually going to be making a couple of these. I'm going to have to get some materials together. No, actually I've got... There's 12. I need... Uh, I'm going to have to make some fluid pipes and redstone engineering blocks, generator blocks, the radiator blocks. Okay, we've got everything for it. And what we're going to do, let's pop over to here. We're going to first upgrade our current cloche system that's doing the fuel generation. And what we're going to do, let's get, uh, oh, let me get the, let me grab our projector real quick. So that, with that, there we go. That's how we make the diesel generator. And then let's go ahead and, okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set it up um, right here, in fact. And I'm actually gonna build a little um, covering for it. It's gonna be kind of like a, like a generator. You know, it would be outside of a house or outside of a building. And we're going to do that with this. We're going to have like a little covering. And then the power is going to be fed back into this building, of course. But um, that way it's a little bit more interesting, I think. And what we're going to do, let's set up our steel scaffolding. Our fluid pipes. Our generator blocks and radiator blocks. And again here, and I know it's another layer on the back there. And then uh, that, that, that that okay easy enough and we'll go ahead and boom there we go goal reached bad for the environment and then what we're going to do um, of course we have to pump in fluid into this and then power is going to come out the top so what we're going to do we're going to make ourselves a couple ender tanks really really quick blaze rods ender pearls obsidian all this is pretty easy stuff and i'm going to go ahead and make three of these I do not have wither dust. I think it's one of those bones that can make it wither bones or necrotic bones. Okay, which one do I have more of? Wither bones. 
All right, so there's Wither Dust. And I'm going to go ahead and slot this, like, right there is fine. And then we need uh, Cauldrons. And I don't think I have any Cauldrons. Well, if it's not here, I wouldn't... Yeah, I don't have any. Unless they are still in these crates. Oh, and by the way, back in here, I've been meaning to show you this. This is a cobble compression system. Um, kind of like the one that we've got on MC Eternal, but it's just compressing. We've got three sextuple compressed. We've had this set up for a little bit, but uh, I've been meaning to show you that. Not a whole lot of time, but for a little bit. Let me pop over to the smith. Let me get the ardite that we need and the iron. I'm going to have to get this pressed into plates really quick. And then we'll go ahead and get our cauldrons. And then we'll go ahead and get our ender tanks. So there we go. There's three of those. And then what we're going to do is... I don't know if I want to store that up. Uh, we'll pump it straight into an ender tank for now. What I'm probably going to do is make an off-site storage for it a bit later. But uh, let's just pop into here. I know I didn't make an easy way to get in this. And then if I put this, well, let me dye it first. So we're going to be storing up biodiesel into it. So what we're going to do is we're going to get, um, let me get uh, nine mystical brown petals. And then we're going to grind these into floral powder. And then does this pack have the clipboard? It does. Let me go ahead and make one of these? No, I can't. It's removed due to instability issues. Well, I'll just remember it for now, and then what we'll do is we'll make, whenever we make a fluid storage area, which we'll do at some point, I don't know when, but we'll write all these down on signs. So we're just going to color these brown, brown, brown. And then what we'll do, if I put this right here, it does auto output. The question is, is it going to auto output fast enough for two diesels? Yeah, I think it will. And let me craft up some fluid pipes real quick. And what we're going to do is um, we're going to dig this down. And let's see, let me remove this too. If we had our fluid pipes come up and maybe they go down to here, let's say. And then let me just... Um, we're just going to kind of hide this down here just slightly and we're going to put our ender tank setting right there and we're going to go ahead and set this to output like that and I don't think it's outputting to the well 15950 I'm assuming that's outputting but I wonder actually I think we have to have the connectors on here don't we let me pop over HV I only got one though let me make some more real quick all right let's go ahead then and make those and if we put yeah it's it's starting up you can see there's power in here now that's all it needed was something to connect to it to say like okay you can run and then what we're going to do is, um, I'm going to have to make some facades, but I think if I ran it down through this, with that, there's the energy line. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to run this out. And what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to facade all of this. So if we run it up to like right there, and then we have a HV capacitor here, we facade this so it looks like the hardened stone. I'm not going to facade it just yet, and the reason being is because I'm not 100% for, for sure that I'm going to do hardened stone. I probably am, but I'm not 100% for sure. Then I'm going to need an HV capacitor uh, really, really quick. Okay, so there is our HV capacitor. And let's pop over to the presses. And we're going to set this up just right there. Let's see, let's actually... Pull this off for just a second. It'll make it a little bit easier for us. So let's do 
this is going to be output. And then uh, the input is going to be, because what I'm thinking, I can run, I can set up a relay there. And then uh, I have just enough wire coil for this. Run that up to the relay, like so. And, oh, I'm going to need one more wire coil. Okay. We set this to input here. And we attach our HV wire connector there. Bring that. There we go. And that's going to quickly fill up this HV capacitor like it's nothing. And I think... Yeah, that's doing fine on the output. Awesome. And then we run, let's see, that's already set to output. And right now it's taking a bit of power, but that's because it's got to get a lot of systems up and running. And then what we're going to do, let's pop down stairs. And I need to put, uh, Let's see, how many potatoes was I... I was doing five potatoes and four hemp. Yeah, see, this has got to fill up with uh, power first. Let's go ahead and dump that, dump that. So that way we can make, you know, we can actually get... Keep this up and running, because at the moment it's probably going to eat through all this biodiesel. Run through this and it's not going to have caught up. Or it's not going to have kept up. Um, so I need these running at full speed. Hopefully it's full speed. Well, probably won't. Uh, it'll be fast enough, though, I think. We'll have to let it run and see. But, uh, yeah, we can see that this is... This is setting good at the moment. Um, it's actually still draining ethanol with one of those running. Okay, I went ahead and shut this off because um, it really kind of puts it in, into perspective that the, the pack is tweaked in a way, and I actually kind of love it. Um, even though it makes me change my plans, but that's okay. I don't mind that. Um, but it puts it in perspective how much the cloche power usage is actually buffed in this pack. Like, to where it just takes so much power, um, it, it will not run this. It will not. So I cut this back down, um, so we could get this thing up and running again. Making some seed oil and stuff. Um, what I'm actually probably going to end up doing is changing this kind of pulling this room back and setting up a harvester system because they're a lot more power friendly. Um, cloches, I think, they buff so much because cloches are overused and I actually don't care. If, I like the way they look. Visually, I think they're gorgeous, um, but I think they're overused because if you want a lot of something, cloches is not the way to go. You're better off making a farm with like speed upgrade items, but... Um, I just thought because we don't have many seeds at the moment, it would be a good way to get that up and going, but that's fine. We do have a bit of a uh, Supremium, though. We can break down. I'm actually going to go ahead and just break this down, in fact. Um, well, I'm not going to break it down on the way yet, because otherwise my inventory is going to get filled up with stuff. Um, but let's go ahead. We're going to craft ourselves a harvester. And I need to get advanced machine blocks. Got the stuff together for that. And then I'm just going to need emeralds, a dispenser, uh, obsidian, nether quartz. One second while I get this together. Which, if you guys watched the original Enigmatica 2, um, you know that I love harvesters. Like, with a passion. Um, they're just amazing. They're really, really good for pretty much any kind of crop harvesting that you need to do. Um, they're honestly, I think, probably the best... Uh, crop harvester to date with like modded they're just really really good um, all around so let's go ahead get our dispenser and then our harvester okay um, we are going to be hitting tech pretty soon though I promise um, I think I've got yeah I've got machine blocks slotted I made some more but uh I do have those slotted. So there's our harvester. And then what I want to get, uh, just to make our lives a little bit better, make more output, we're going to get some sprinklers from Cyclic. Um, we're going to go ahead and start with 
five of them, I think. But yeah, we'll definitely be hitting tech a bit heavier in the next couple episodes. Because right now, all I have is immersive engineering. And it's not even that far into immersive engineering that I've got. It's just like basic. I've got very basic immersive engineering at the moment. So go ahead and get ourselves some fertile soil. Which I've actually got some here. I'll just grab that too. Because we might end up using it. Um, once we get all this underway. And then let me go ahead. Since it's nighttime, Which I don't know if I'll get this done. During the night. But um, let's take a look at prosperity. Um, it is block of emerald. Block of quartz. Block of diamond. Block of gold. We'll get us two. And then we're also going to need... Um, any kind of pasture seeds um, and then rock crystal so and let me go ahead and get a shipping bin also um, because I don't have emeralds to make a block of emerald right now I've got four to my name and um, it would probably be best to go ahead and just set this up over at the kitchen area and yeah, we'll put it right here for right now. And let's see, what can we sell? Yeah, it's mainly meat and fish. And speaking of, what does it take to make like chicken? That's a tier two. Okay, we might make some of those perhaps. I don't know, we'll see. And what we can do is we can throw stuff in here and hit sale and we'll get emeralds. Um, I don't have my bee set up going for Pams. I'm going to have to get that set up soon. I think in the coming episodes we are going to be working on a bit of agriculture and a bit of tech. Because we're really weak in both of those. We start off really, really good in agriculture. I mean, we've got this huge farmland. Of course, none of it's automatic harvest, but it doesn't really matter because I can get so much per harvest. Um, but then we've kind of been focused on magic and building the storage building and stuff, that kind of stuff for so long that, um, now I've really slipped on agriculture and I've always had some really low quality tech on this, this playthrough <laughs> because I wanted to kind of switch it up. Last, last time we went through Enigmatica, we really focused on tech at the start a lot and it's been fun kind of mixing it up and doing a bit more magic, but I want to start getting some auto harvesting stuff going on. And so we're definitely going to want, um, we're going to want to upgrade a bit, but uh, there's our blocks of prosperity. So we've got 18 prosperity shards to play around with. For right now, I'm only going to make one of each seed that I'm wanting to make, and then we will... Um, will expand as time goes on so I've got enough right now to make four seeds basically and honestly getting um, prosperous on a tool would be worth it because then we would get prosperity shards like randomly as we do things maybe oh you know what though here we go I got an idea let me get a let me, let me pop over to the astral area real quick. Let's just grab this cobalt pick. And to get the prosperous uh, on the tool rod. Prosperity shard tool rod. Let's see. Base essence tool rod. This is what we want. And we'll need a base essence ingot. Okay, so we're going to use four of them for this. And then let me grab our tool rod cast. I'm going to throw that into there. I need to get Solium on my sword blade as well. I'll probably just change it for the time being. Like right now it's uh, manual and sword blade. But that way we can start getting chunks. We're not going to do it this episode, but we will um, in the upcoming episodes. So I could have also saved for gravel. It's just the shipping bin's a bit easier. Okay, there's that. Go ahead and pour it. And... There we go. And then let's throw that on this pick. It's like no. It's got six modifiers. Wonderful. Okay, so then it's going to have Prosperous. And let's throw this back in. Okay, we're going to let that run for a little bit. We'll come back 
and check the vacuumulator and then we'll probably set up a drawer for it um, as well um, probably just switch this hardened stone to be hardened stone and yeah it might be what i do switch that and have like a double drawer okay well what we can do now um, we're going to use our prosperity shards let me pop over to the storage building let me grab a couple seeds go ahead and just get three for now and then we're going to craft these up to base crafting seeds and then we're going to get tier one crafting seeds and i'm going to go ahead and just upgrade these i'm going to need um let me actually break that down <laughs> Oh my gosh, so much of it. Um, let's go ahead and get tier two crafting seeds and the seeds that I actually want to make right now. It's probably not what most people go for when they first get into magical crops, but it's what I need. Um, I need, let's see, I need basalt. And then I need, um, I really need limestone too because I'm just about out of limestone. Don't have a whole lot of it. But I also need slight and then I need the skystone seeds which are these are a tier three so I'm gonna have to upgrade and then I need any tier two essence so really I think what I should probably do for right now can I make this anyhow uh, okay I'm gonna go find a piece of limestone just one piece but that's what I'm saying, like, my building materials is what I don't have a lot of. It's like, the rest of the stuff's easy, but it's building materials that's, like, a pain. Oh, uh, there we go. Okay, I finally found some limestone. I had to go pretty far for that. Uh, let's pop back over, no, not here, the star field. And, um, first up, slight, and that one's just crafted in here. It's the, um, okay, let's pop back over here. The tier three is going to require the astral shrine, but this one I can just make here is the slight. And then, um, basalt. This is like the best moment ever. Now I'm going to make a bunch of these seeds. Like, honestly, I think a man is not measured by how many diamonds he has, but how much limestone he has. And basalt is <laughs> slight. <laughs> because I've been I've been having to farm that stuff. And Skystone, I'm going to get that soon. Um, because it's actually been painful farming those. Like, truthfully. Um, and let's see. Has this produced any prosperity shards yet? It's not a really high chance, but with an automated system, we should find ourselves getting a bit... None yet, but that's fine. Because whenever it does come up, the vacuumulator should get it and just hold on to it. Uh, there's plenty of space in there. It's going to take a while for it to back up on prosperity. Okay, so what we're going to do, let's pop over to the... Well, let's just pop over to the windmill. I've got to figure out where I want to place this harvester first. And I could either move the diesel generator over... Wondering, like, what's going on with that? Um, I could either move the diesel generator over or just set up kind of a little power system for now until we get proper power up and going. Um, and I've got to figure out where I want to put this. And if we set it up, say, like, right there. Let me see the size. Yeah, I think that's pretty reasonable. Um, and maybe make this our starting plot let me go ahead yeah that'll be fine right in here will be fine i just want to load one chunk for this ideally so there we go and then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and change out a bit of this for fertile soil and this may stay here honestly the placement's not bad um so it'll probably end up staying here my spruce it up might you know do a little bit but um and i've got some ideas for how to make the harvesters not look so 
blatantly, here's a harvester um, as well. But let's go ahead and drop in our tier two inferium seeds for starters. Because I'm going to want to get that stuff farming up um, quite a bit. And then our slate. And then let me get a couple buckets of water also. Because I want to add our sprinklers in. And we're going to go ahead and just pull up. Whoops. Sorry. Let's go ahead and put our water in there. And we're going to put one sprinkler right there. So that can start speeding up our crops a little bit. Alright, so let's just put that in. Which I know it's not growing anything at the moment, but... Eventually I want big fields for all the crops that we actually need. But thing is, we can make miners that do all of our metals for us, which I plan to do. And of course there is the... Um, there is miners that will do the, the building materials for us as well, which we will get into those. But um, metals you'll probably have plenty of without even having to do magical crops for them. But it's the, I need a lot of the inferior essence that's just for like creative items and things like that. I'm going to need it. There we go. That's actually growing pretty quick now. Let's go ahead and F7, see where we are on light. Okay, that should be good. There we go. There's some slate seeds. Okay, now I need to get a little bit of power in this. And what I'm going to do for right now, I could move the diesel generator over. But since I don't know where it's going to go permanently, I think what I'm going to do is just do something simple. Um, honestly, I might even go with one of these. Honestly, for right now, <laughs> I know this is terrible, but because we're going to be tackling tech and agriculture soon, I'm going to steal this for the time being. Because this isn't even like doing anything most of the time, because it's like always filled up now. Um... And this will just make our lives a whole lot easier. Because I just want this system up and running, is all I want. Just so we're producing some Inferium, we're producing some Slate Essence. Because that's just going to passively run, and it's going to help me out a lot with building. Um, and so what we'll do is we'll just put that on there. And then it's going to... In just a second, it should harvest... No, let me set it to area. There we go. Now it's going to whoop, harvest all that at once. There we go. And we got some ginseng root. Okay, well, I don't want that. <laughs> Get out of here. It was, there was just some ginseng sitting around here somewhere. Okay, so we've got some slate essence, which we're going to need uh, eight of those, but it does make 24 at a time. That's going to help me out a ton building. And then, yeah, and we can also use it to make uh, these. And then what I want to do is, um, let me go ahead and just put this in the ground here. Uh, let's pop over, oh, I never planted my basalt. Let me put that in here and my limestone also. And let me pop over the storage building and I'm going to do, for right now I'm actually just going to do a crate. These is, this is going to store a lot. And since I don't have anything proper set up to actually send the items anywhere and store them away, we're just going to do a crate because we can. And then let me grab a stack of seeds. I'm going to go ahead and just convert these to Inferium seeds because we're actually going to need a lot of this essence. And this will be a better use of all the Inferium that we've built up than just blowing it on a bunch of seeds. Because I'm going to want a lot of Slate Seeds and stuff like that. And I need some kind of passive um, Inferium coming in. So there's 64 of that. And then we'll upgrade it. I'm going to go for the tier... What is it like? Oh, now wait a second. <laughs> How do we make a tier two seed? Do tell. 
takes crafting seeds in this pack. Well, that's fine. I've got 64 tier ones. That's fine. That's okay. Um, that honestly, that's going to be just as useful because all we would be upscaling whenever we upgrade them, of course, is a little bit more. I mean, I would be getting one more inferior per harvest, which does add up. But with the cost, since it takes blocks of prudentium, I thought it was um, I thought it was the third tier because most of the stuff is third tier before it needs astral sorcery. For the seeds, it's second tier. I know we looked at that earlier, and it just totally slipped my mind. So, all right, what we're gonna do? I wish this ginseng root. Where is it coming from? Right here, I guess. Okay, I'm gonna set this to show me the preview, and then give me just a second. I'm gonna tear up a lot of this. But it's funny because like the the void miners, I'm more ex I'm more excited about botanical miners than anything. To get me like passive ways to get a lot of these different flowers and things. Because I actually need a lot of flowers right now. But uh, I'm dreading farming them. <laughs> Alright, so there we go. And I'll keep expanding on this. And eventually we're going to move our basalt and limestone. Once I have more seeds, I'll make a dedicated field with those. And you can see this, is, this windmill is not actually running it like perfectly. But it doesn't really matter if it takes a little bit longer. It just gives more stuff time to grow, is all it is. So, let's go ahead. Let's turn off the preview. And for right now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run this over. We're going to say extract is always active. And we're just going to add a crate here uh, to start storing up the stuff. And I'll just, you know, I'll just check it ever so often. And, um, you know, if we have essence built up in here, that's great. Then let me go ahead and get, like, four slate essence and to make the sky stone we're nearly done for this episode i know it's getting a bit late we're gonna need sky stone dust i can make it through the pulverizer or the quartz grindstone or save for it with dust all right well i'm probably just gonna save for it let's check on our vacuumulator still has not gotten any prosperity and let me grab some sand i always found the um the fact that this had like ex nihilo in it to be the most random thing in the world but i have been using it for um, guardian drops and for um, now i'm using it for skystone dust and i just want it for building purposes that's all i want it for and then we're going to need blocks of intermedium and tier three crafting seeds oh, which i need prosperity shards for that Okay, let me check on, uh, yeah, Prosperous, uh, it should work. It may just be really, really rare, and it might be disabled in this pack. I don't know. I guess we'll just have to let it run for a while and find out. I mean, it's possible it may not have dropped any yet, um, but it still could. And it may not generate a lot. It might just be something that has to run passively. So I'm not going to... I don't have the emeralds right now. And I've got to set up bees. We're going to have to start getting into agriculture. So I'll have to wait on the skystone seeds for the time being. But that's okay. We did get a good dent in uh, the things that I really needed. Which was slate and stuff. And then I'll give that a little bit to run. In the next couple episodes we're going to be setting up our bee system. So we have pretty much infinite emeralds. Um, through the shipping bin just like we did back on um, just like we did back on the last playthrough you know um, we just did it a lot earlier I guess even though episode wise it wasn't um, wasn't a whole lot earlier episode wise and I'm just going to dump the my magical crop stuff into here for now um, but this is generating a decent amount so there's that but anyways i know it's about wrapping up point four this episode so we're gonna end this one out here um i hope you guys enjoyed it i know we had that whole little hiccup with the diesel generator i apologize about that um but originally i was just gonna do cloches but i think this will be this will be quite a bit better uh, because these are actually growing pretty fast and there's a lot more than one growing you know cloches aren't cheap especially not on power so really i think this is a better method to go with um it's probably a blessing in disguise i think it's going to be a lot better for us colossians are just kind of overall they're eh, 
unless they're good for like Pam's uh, just passive food kind of a thing. And they're good for, um, in this situation, you know, for some of the more expensive seeds, when we don't have a lot of them, they'd be really useful for that. Um, cause they do grow decently fast, but I think this is okay. There's, a lot, there's so much Inferium coming in, but, um, yeah. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, as always, be sure and hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe if you're not already to stay updated with when new videos come out. And I hope to see you guys next time. So until then, as always, do take care, stay safe. I'll see you guys then.